Hello and welcome back. This is problem T permutations from educational TP contest. The problem states that you are given a positive integer n and you are also given a string of length n minus 1 which only consists of opening and closing brackets and we need to find the number of permutations of length 1 to n which satisfy the following condition uh, with the modulo 10 to 9 plus 7 the condition is that you, according to the string that is given s uh, so there is some condition inequality that is followed between the adjacent elements of the permutation so if the string character is less then the number on the left hand side is smaller than the number on the right hand side and if it is greater then the number on the left hand side is larger than the number on the right hand side and this is the main condition and the constraints are n up to 10,000 and the string constraints obviously opening and closing brackets yeah so that's it about the problem statement let me also give you some example so in the sample they have given this string opening closing opening so if you put a one here then three two and four so three uh, the conditions are all met and this is a valid permutation of numbers one two four hence uh, the following ways are possible this was one case you can also go over there can be large number of permutations possible for a particular string hence the question demands the answer modulo 10 to 9 plus 7 okay that's it about the problem statement uh, do give some time to think on this because this is a fairly difficult problem so do try it on your own first then you can discuss the solution okay so according the according to the problem statement we are given uh, a sequence which is of the opening and closing uh, my bad not opening and closing but the inequalities less than and greater than and we need to fill the gaps between them uh, let's suppose we are creating a sequence of length 4 and the elements of those sequence a1 a2 and a a3 and a4 are the elements of the permutation that we need to form and uh, obviously the numbers must have values between 1 to 4 and all of them must occur exactly once and following are the cases for which this equality is valid so this is one of the example and the general idea to construct a sequence one by one so suppose we fix a1 then we move on to a2 then we uh, uh, keep a value which is other than a1 in a2 then move on to a3 and keep a value in a3 which is other than what we have chosen as a1 and a2 and so on this requires that at a state any state suppose i state we need to know what all values we have already inserted in the previous positions so this is fairly difficult to store because the best we can do is to store the values that we have already taken in a bit mask and and this string length uh, can take the values up to 2 raised to power the number of choices that we have made earlier hence for a constraint of n up to 3000 this is uh, definitely not possible and obviously not the expected solution but that is the first approach that you can think of while uh, approaching this problem and uh, basically we need to somehow uh, let's try to figure out some insights from this so so let's try to figure out something suppose we have fixed a1 a2 and a3 and a1 a2 and a3 are the elements of the permutation 1 to 3 right it does not contain 4 in here in the construction we these values can contain a 4 but uh, for now we are only uh, considering that we have permutation of length 3 and we are trying to extend it for length 4 by adding an element a4 at the end so for now let's suppose a1 a2 and a3 are the elements of the permutation 1 2 3 only so let's try to observe some of the things 
suppose I have taken this example 2, 3, 1 and we need to find out what all values for A4 are possible we have fixed A1 as 2, A2 as 3 and A3 as 1 and this inner box is a permutation of 1 to 3 and the outer box must be a permutation of 1 to 4 right and choices of A, A4 are 4 because uh, any element can take any value in the permutation and according to that we need to adjust the values of the elements in the inner box so we iterate what we will make the choices for the last element of the permutation which is A4 and according to that we, let's see how these values need to be changed suppose if A4 is 1 in that case uh, as you can see this uh, sequence of integers is formed and in this uh, some some of the inequalities are not now not satisfied so as you can see 3 is less than 4 this is correct 4 is greater than 2 is correct but 2 is not less than 1 hence this is bad so if we are fixing a4 as 1 and we need to generate a permutation which is a valid permutation according to the sequence of inequalities given then this thing that is generated is uh, not good according to the choices that we fixed for the inner permutation so for that what we can do is basically increment all of these values by one so now and if we increment all of them by one the equality does not change because uh, all the elements are added the same amount and even if they are equal then even if they are less or equal uh, less or greater it will does it will not affect the inequality hence um, by adding one in this corresponding elements we will achieve a permutation which is like this and the main idea is to make so uh, inserting a4 as one we achieved a permutation of length four but it does not contain a four right we somehow need to make these integers uh, a permutation of one to four and the only way that we can do is we fixed a4 right so we can't change the fourth value but we can change the other value so we already have a one so this one needs to be pushed up or you can say incremented so this one was incremented then uh, two this when this one was incremented a two was already present so it cre created a duplicate so this two also need to be incre incremented and three also needs to be incremented so that all of them uh, create values to three four and one was the choice that we already fixed for a4 equals to 2 we have value 2 but this previous choice also added 2 and uh, we don't have a 4 so we will increment the values but one is there is no need to change one because we only have one single one hence it will be used in the permutation as it is and for 2 and 3 they are added one for a4 equals to 3 we have a 3 but we can have a 3 on the left hand side in the inner permutation so we add a 1 to it and notice that 1 and 2 that did not change because all the values which are less than 3 or less than a4 in general are kept as it is so in this case a1 a4 was 4 but anything we didn't have anything less than one but uh, in this case the value which was less than a4 which was one was kept as it is in this case a4 was three and the value which was less than that which will be one and two was kept as it is for a4 equals to four all the values will be kept as it is so that uh, the numbers with less than four are all available as they are and for the numbers which are greater than equals to 4 they are shifted to the right by adding 1 so that a permutation of length 4 is created so that is the main observation so uh, the main idea is to fix a permutation of a fixed length this inner permutation is of length 3 but when we try to extend it to length 4 then the outer permutation is fixed based on the value that is in the 
last element of that permutation a4 so this is the main observation that you need to grasp from this idea let's go over that once again so as we saw if a1 is greater than equals to a4 all the elements greater than equals to a4 will be incremented so this incrementation is not like we are actually going to increment these choices it's just for the sake of understanding that whenever we are adding an element to the end of a permutation we can still get the same permutation or the same set of equalities by changing the element by changing some some of the elements and that basically means that the permutation choices that we are already made uh, didn't need to undergo uh, shuffling in between them so the order was fixed and it just it was introduced the last element was introduced and uh, based on that we again achieve another permutation of the next length so to make a permutation of length 4 we basically the choices for all previous choices where it was greater than equals to the choice last element that we added becomes plus one and all the elements which are less than that uh, remain intact and uh, permutation of length four is formed based on the choice of the permutation of length three yeah this is clear to us and one more thing is so here also we went over the idea that to add another element in the sequence of choices that we already have we we are considering all the elements still we are considering all the elements but uh, it is not feasible because we can't store this in the standard state of a dynamic programming that what all choices that we already have and what we need to consider and one thing to observe here is uh, that only the element that we are going to add at the end and the previous chosen element matters if these two are fixed then the entire permutation gets fixed and it will uh, create a unique permutation based on the constraint yeah so we will keep uh, we will try all possibilities for the last element and we will check this equality and insert the previous element uh, to the current permutation or you can think of that uh, to extend the permutation inner permutation by one we need to add a value a4 which will be based on this equality and it will only be determined based on the last chosen value because this equality basically less than only uh, this is already satisfied that three is greater than one is satisfied now only thing that needs to be satisfied to convert this from length three to four is this less than sign and based on that we will um, put values in a4 so here we have considered all the possible values but in general what we need to do is we need to fix a4 and based on that we need to find what all values this uh, last element of the inner permutation that uh, that element what that value can take so let's go over the conclusions from this so obviously the equality is not affected if you add one to all the elements as we saw and extending a permutation of length l by adding an element y at the end increments all the previous elements which are greater than equals to y we saw that and fixing the last and previous to the last element is enough to extend the permutation of length l to l plus one this is the most important step that we have observed so to extend a permutation of length three to length four we only need to know what was the last element of permutation 3 and what will be the next element that will be added to this permutation of length 3 to make it a permutation of length 4 so based on this we will write a recursive approach so the main idea is to solve for n so we have a string of we want to create a string of length l or n as i have described here so the number of permutation of length l whose last element is last which will also be required in the state because uh, when we make transitions to the next state then what was the 
next value that was chosen and all needs to be considered and this will be basically some of all the recursive calls and basically we are fixing uh, the value at index or position l as last so we are saying that uh, insert last this integer uh, at this location and uh, for this last what will be the adjacent left to it and it will be basically uh, it will be determined using this condition uh, this this condition is essentially the same thing that we saw in the diagram so since we already since we only need to know what was the uh, previous and the last previous and the this is the last that we are iterating we are starting from the last position so this is the nth location and last is one in this case and we need to know what value that we can put here and as we saw that uh, essentially we can put only values from 1 to 3 here right but it may be possible that the permutation of length 4 has a value which is greater than 3 in the inner permutation position hence we need to consider the actual value of that particular position so as we saw this 4 we need to compare if uh, whatever value that occurs here based on the condition that is plus 1 or uh, it remains same so it remains same if uh, the value is less than the value that we are adding and if it is it is plus 1 if it is greater than equals to the value that we are adding okay so so previous will only take value from 1 to l minus 1 because it is it that element belongs to a permutation of length minus 1 not of the length l we are adding an element to the last but for the previous position the that element can take only values from 1 to l minus 1 but once that larger permutation is created in that the value of that particular position will be different it will be plus one or the same as we saw uh, this is the condition for that and uh, depending on that if we, if we check that this uh, conditions are followed one of this is followed and based on that we will basically fix the choice of that particular position and move on to the next position which is basically we are solving it from right to left and as i have mentioned this can also be solved from left to right we need to fix the first element then what will be the next element to first depending on this condition only uh, they will be flipped a little bit but overall conditions will be remaining the same so we start by calling this function as n comma 1 plus n comma 2 n comma 3 because this last can take n values this is the approach for implementation uh, the construction that we are creating by the choices of the recursive calls is basically fixing the fir first we fix the last elements of last element of the permutation there are n choices for the last element of the permutation 1 to n and uh, based on that that goes inside the state and we need to find out what will be the adjacent left value to the value that we have chosen which is present in the state of the function and we need to perform the transitions uh, according to the condition that we saw earlier this approach is basically o of n cube because as we see this is the index which can take order n um, values last can also take n values and there is a transition loop over the previous values which can also take up to order n unique values so overall this will be the uh, state memory time memory complexity will be n square but uh, time complexity will be of n cube now the first of all to understand it better i will just go through this order n cube solution so that you understand what the 
exact flow of the recurrence is going on yeah so after that we will try to optimize it which will be order n square solution for accepted solution okay so this is the solution order n cube recursive so uh, this is my custom code so we have i created a stack for storing the modular arithmetics so this is my struct for storing the answer uh, modulo just remember that so that you don't confuse it with the actual integer or modular okay let's go over the post solution so we have n and s inputs let's go over the inputs first i'm taking inputs this is the answer final answer and first we fix what will be the last element of the permutation right so, so let's take an example suppose n is 5 and basically we need to fix what will be present at this location so this is my last that i'm iterating over so once i fix this uh, i can fix the adjacent values which will be present here and this net this is this will eventually recursively call and um, attain at a base condition and we can return a answer from there so answer is basically the sum of all the possible choices which starts by giving n choices for the last element right because it is a member of the permutation and can take up to n so id parameters of the function id which denotes uh, what position that i'm currently at and what value that i've inserted at this position i've already inserted this value at this position right so let's say this is the location id and i am inserting a value which is put here this is this some easy to understand variable naming uh, again base conditions we only have one element and there can only be a permutation of length one there can only be one case so this is the base condition and this is the character that we need to check the equality for now uh, i have inserted a pad let's use this only we have inserted a value which is put here at this location now we need to know or we need to know what all values that we can insert at a location id minus one right okay so as we saw if we have a permutation of length id minus one and we need to extend it to a permutation of length id and we have already fixed this value right we have fixed this value now uh, any element we need to know reiterating over this in this for loop so this is x and let's say this is what we are iterating over this can only take uh, values up to 1 to id minus 1 because it is an element of a permutation which has length id minus 1 not id right and as we saw in the previous explanation that this value will be incremented to plus one to make it a member of the bigger permutation if this condition is uh, satisfied which is the value that we are inserting is greater than equals to the value that is already fixed is the last value that we 
inserted at the position id right and based on that we will find out what is the previous value which is the actual value that is present in that position and based on that uh, we will check for both of these inequalities if it is less than that we need to check that the previous is less than the value that we already uh, fixed or if it is greater than then we need to check the same and then we can make the transaction transition and it will be the sum of all the possible ways that we can uh, put the position in that so this is how the recursive function works this is overall order n square time complexity as i told there are n choices for this not choices but the the state can take or uh, n values independently same for this parameter and this is a transition loop which can run an up to n time hence this is a order n cube solution if you add a memorization here right currently it is exponential but you also need to add exp memorization then it will be converted into order n this is the base i think uh, even if you don't understand iterative dp this top down dp will give a give you a clear understanding of what is actually happening by the way in which we are actually creating or constructing a permutation so let me give a brief about that once again we are, we are currently at index id we have fixed what the value at this position will be based on that we will find out or iterate our values that are possible at this position denoted by x let's say fixed value is f and based on the inequalities we will this is a x is a member of permutation of length ad minus one and f the permit is an element of the permutation of length id so that's why x only goes over uh, that's why x only takes values from one to id minus one right this is the Explanation for that, and based on that, we will check the condition which was this equal, uh, greater than equals to value, and it is incremented. And the real value is checked, not the value that we are uh, value for x that we fixed here. The real value will be checked for the equ equality. So, this was the order n cube top down dp solution. Let's try to take the next step to convert this into iterative this will be the same order n cube but iterative bottom up dp solution let's go with this uh, this is fairly straightforward to convert so let me explain it once again uh, this is the dp 2 d dp have two states they are as it is converted to the dimensions of the 2d dp array and and as our input uh, again the base case permutation of length one only one way to create a permutation of length one then we are fixing uh, now as you can see the uh, iterative dp performs computation from left to right so this will essentially fix what our value will be present here which will be put here according to the naming combination here so we fix the location fix what we need to insert here and then we will iterate over what values that this previous position can be take which will be previous again the constant as you saw this is a member of permutation of length id hence it can take a value between one and id this is a member of a permutation from one to id minus one it can it can only take values from one to id minus one okay the same thing that we saw in the top domain approach the same thing is converted we find out the real value and we check the equality and then add the number of ways from the previous state that conditions remain same and again since this for loop is accountable 
because we know dp of id for my last values for all the values right so dp of n of 1 will basically denote that we have constructed a permutation where the last element is 1 but it can be 2 as well 3 as well up to n and this is basically dp of n of 1 and this will be dp n of n last element of permutation of length n where the last element is n and we need to add the answer for all of these ways independently and this was also done in this for loop here right we fixed the last element but in iterative dp we find out the answer for all the states first and then change it to the other thing okay so this again straightforward n values n for the fixed position and then it will be an order n cube just iterative solution order n, n square memory now let's go over final solution order n square so let's clear this up a better understanding so how to optimize it further okay. so the only thing that you need to observe here is that dpid is a sum of the su sum of the values from the previous row right dpid it depends on dpid minus one right in this case also dpid depends on dpid minus one so this is a 2d grid where id is a row it will have some values it will be a it will have dimensions n and basically updating some cell in this is basically taking some of some of the values in this part we don't know the endpoints yet but this is the main idea so dpid of some position j and j is basically put here this is j so to update the value for this location we are taking this sum from the previous row and from that previous row as well we are taking it from a contiguous location so this idea is this will be already computed since we are computing from left to right right this will be already computed and we can basically build a prefix sum over this prefix sum over the last row of the dp and update the answer at this particular position in order one time hence this is will be a substitute for this order and for loop this for loop is basically adding values one by one in this range but we can optimize it to order one using prefix this is the main idea okay so yeah so once we fix what will be put at the last index which is index id or permutation uh, we are again building the prefix sums prefix dprs from the row id minus one right this is the standard technique for creating prefix sums and we will fix the last element and based on that based on the conditions uh, there will be different ranges from which we need to take the sum of previous dp values from the previous row if the sign is less than then suppose we have fixed put here let's say let's say this is x then basically l and r will be the values for y or the values for the inner for loop which is previous in the order n cube solution will be replaced by y and this y can take values in this range 1 2 x minus 1 and if it is greater 
sign then it will take values from in this case it will take values from 1 to x minus 1 and if it is greater then it will take values from x to id minus 1 yeah. so this will essentially compute the sums in order one time by eliminating the inner loop and this part remains as it is because it's the same transitions that we have performed there okay cool so this will be order n square solution and time complexity will also be sorry memory complexity will also be n square this can be reduced to um n as well because dp id only depends on dp id minus one right hence we we can also perform some memory optimization and make this to order one and square order n memory yeah so that was it about this let me quickly go give you a walkthrough So as we saw, uh, to extend a permutation of length L to L plus 1, you only need to fix the last element and the previous last element. And based on that, we can extend it from one prefix to other. And that in that manner, we can basically compute the answer for uh, permutation of length 1, then fix the value for that and extend it to the permutation of length 2 and so on by um, initial uh finding the answer for permutation of length n yeah that's it for this video if you found this useful do like and share this among your friends and if you have any doubts or suggestions do let me know in the comments thank you